as I promised you today, Bob will show you about the seven giants that control many lives today. Maybe they're controlling yours right now, but Bob will show you how to overcome them. The seven giants, uh, I mean, I saw that immediately when uh, Bob was teaching that. I began to see how I had been doing most of those things in relationships, particularly with my wife and uh, children. It's powerful what it did to change it. The seven giants, all of them, that's me. I want to control. I've had control of my life for 32 years. And me controlling my life for 32 years, it hasn't gotten me nowhere. I want to express my gratitude for those of you that have stayed with it, both here in the class and for those on video or audio. Um, I said when we started, I, I'm a papa, just a spiritual father in the body of Christ. I feel um, very deeply the things I've been sharing with you, and um, I want so now to be able to summarize in these last two sessions what the issues are. And so we'll be doing it, uh, try to do it very carefully, very methodically. And uh, I'd like for you, if you would, turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 5. And uh, if you're watching by video, I do believe you have a Bible with you. And if you would please just... Uh, uh, turn in there with me and let's look at it together so that we're um, aware that uh, what we're doing, Romans chapter 5, 1 through 10, summarizes the whole gospel as I understand it in a very, very powerful way. And uh, we can't, I can't teach this section. All I want to do is just pick up a, a couple points. Therefore, just as uh, Romans 5 and verse 1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. That's where we started. Session one was uh, uh, the, the God's peace and God's resistance and God turning us around so that he could walk with us. All right, so we've come full circle. We have peace with God because we are now going his way. Uh, we have obtained an, our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we hope in the glory of God. Not only this, but we exult in our tribulations because we know that tribulation brings about perseverance. Perseverance, proven character, that's the, the nature of agape. And proven character, hope, and verse 5, hope does not disappoint. Now, if you want to mark this, the literal Greek says, hope which will not let you down. Now, we talk today about, about disappointment, and uh, this is uh, what I'm teaching you will not let you down. It will not disappoint you. And because, why? Because the love of God has been poured out. That love, word love is agape. The, the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. While we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Uh, one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would even dare to die. Verse 8, now this is important and I want you to hear this. I have this marked in my own Bible for the same reason I'm trying to give it to you. God demonstrates his own love. Now, this is really important. This is Father's own love. This is not something borrowed or something that God sent. He came to us himself. God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. Verse 10, while we, were, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more having been reconciled. Now, I want you to underline this in your Bible, please. And I want you to see it uh, with your own eyeballs in the Bible. We shall be saved by his life. Now, everyone teaches we're saved by his death. Isn't that right? 
Now, forgiveness comes by his death, but the, the Christian life is lived by his life. Now, I'm going to try to show you that so clearly tonight uh, in, this, uh, in this 11th session. I'm going to try to show you this so clearly that I don't think we can miss it. Now, underline that, please. <coughs> Saved by his life. His life is the thing that I must have at the center of my being. And so I'm going to talk to you about what are the enemies of our Christian existence. Now, in uh, Luke 9, Jesus says, take your cross daily. Take up your cross daily. And so when I was fussing around with that, I thought, um, why do I need a daily cross? Because there are not daily crises. There isn't daily crisis, but there is daily eros. You understand? So crosses, I always thought the cross was some kind of a thing that I picked up in an emergency, some kind of a powerful temptation, something that's going to take me off from God. And then I begin to realize what Jesus was saying. The daily cross is because the nature of eros is that it's continually manifesting. Now, what I want you to do, it's on your notes, but we put it up on the board. Now, I want you to, I want you to, I'll, I'll read these and then I want you, we're going to spend a few minutes and talk about the seven giants that keep us from intimacy with God. These, listen carefully, these are the seven things in a man that Jesus doesn't trust. Remember? Remember the John 2? They were believers, but Jesus didn't trust them. These are the seven things in a man or a woman that Jesus doesn't trust. And when these are present, these are the things that cause us to miss the road. Now, everybody talks about, you know, robbing banks or getting drunk or popping pills or shooting up. Those were all real problems, but the, the root of those problems are here, not there. So if we're going to deal with anything, we've got to go to the actual root of the thing and find out why does it work like that. Now, look at the, the seven giants, are, and, 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 uh, um, and these are, these, uh, uh, we could spend, uh, literally, we could spend a week just, just talking about these. But once I introduce them to you, now watch, look good, feel good, be right. The key one always is stay in control. That is the consummate problem of every man and every woman. When I start to lose control, I start to panic, I get mean, and, I, and, and then all the things that I've ever worried about start to manifest. Now, stay in control, a hidden agenda, personal advantage, and undisturbed. Now, I wish we could just spend time on those. Now, let's look at these for a moment. These are the seven things that Jesus doesn't trust in a man or a woman. And when he, when he works these out, now I, I'll, I'll try to show you how Jesus worked these out. If you read the Gospels, just go down now and, and pick out any of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, or all four of them, and watch for these seven things being manifested in the twelve disciples. You will have a, you will have a camp meeting. Because what you see is discipleship is designed to work these things out of us in a way that, that this, now these are, listen to what I'm saying, these are the seven evidences that you are, you have eros at the center of your being, Christian or not. Um, I was doing this in a, in a situation in California. Look good, feel good, be right, stay in control. man put his hand up. And he, I said, yes, sir, because he was awed. He says, you're describing the pastor that we're looking for. And I began to realize what he was, you know, and then everybody laughed because what was happening. Now, now watch, these seven giants look good. Question now, what will I do to look good? 
Come on. Anything I need to do to look good. Now that's saved or unsaved. If you start making me look bad, I'm going to be on you like white on rice. See? Because looking good is very much part of the era of security. I've got to look good. And then we talk about styling and, and you know, and, and, uh, and, and in the joint, talk. Uh, old Murphy said, you go out there on the iron pile and get all gorilla'd up, you know. And, and, and you know, you come out there, man, and you, you know, what, what is he doing? What is he doing? Come on. Looking good. He's bad. He's mean, you know. And so all of this is creating an image. Now what? Feel good. Now listen, these are the seven eros payoffs. These are the seven things that I trade for my freedom. An eros payoff is what I, what I prefer rather than my freedom. When I, now, feel good. Just, just think for a moment. Feel good. What's behind feel good? What will I do to feel good? Now we're talking drugs, alcohol, sexual misbehavior, crime. I feel better when I got money in my pocket than when I don't have money in my pocket. So much, much of the driving force of, of the whole deal we're looking at is right here. I want to feel good. And, 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 and I, I, I want to be careful I don't go too far in the, in, in the realm of sexual addiction. But the whole thing is, is a matter of, of a momentary orgasm. In other words, my whole life is destroyed for a, for a, a one thirty second orgasm because feel good is controlling my whole life. Think of it. Now, be right. Never having had this problem, I read about it, all right? <laughs> How many could believe that whole marriages are destroyed for what? To be right. Now, many of us have destroyed others with our mouth just to come out on the right side of this thing. I could tell you instances. I, th I know of one right now that's so embarrassing to me because I knew that I was right and by God, it was going to be that way, only to be proven wrong. You understand? But, but look, now, you think these are innocent. These are not innocent. These are the real giants. You, you see, and, and, and I'll show you in a moment. Be right is such a frightening thing. The key giant, deal with this one, and the others we get weak and get fearful. If you just say to God, I am breaking the control of this stuff off my life. I'm going to break the control, the control that's been on my life, all my life. I am going to be a free man. That's why, please hear this, that's why I think every man or woman who wants to walk free has to deal with cigarettes and nicotine. Because it's a, it's a small master and a big slave. Because what it does, it controls your life. It's an evident of the thing is in control. And so, so staying in control is a, is, a, is a frightening thing. Now, learning to surrender the control, which we're going to do in a moment, uh, uh, the, 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 the trying to give God that, that steering wheel, breaking the thing where I am controlling life. Why do I want to control everybody and control life? Tell me what's behind it. Why do I want to control everybody, control the conversation, control people? People control the thing. Why do I want to do that? Anybody? I won't get hurt. If I can control the conversation. Somebody starts talking about God. Well, I don't want to talk about God. I would like to talk about the weather. You understand? So I'm controlling the conversation because if this thing opens about God, this thing's going to get close to me. I'm going to be uncomfortable. I'm not going to... And I'm not going to... So, so now you see how, how, how these things... Now these run in packs. These, these are seven giants. They run in packs. A hidden agenda. A hidden agenda is one of the most frightening things I've ever seen. I, I, I don't know how to illustrate this. Let me just tell you an instance. 
this man was in a church and he, he, wanted, he wanted friends, he wanted friendship and he said, Lord, please uh, uh, allow me to have friends in the church. And finally, this man says to him, hey, man, why don't you come over to my house for dinner? And he starts to love on him and says, why don't you come over to my house for dinner? The guy says, man, if somebody finally heard my prayer, goes over to the house for dinner, wonderful meal served, guy's feeling all loved, and the guy says, I would like to talk to you about Amway. Do you understand? Now, I, I run up, I run up an agape flag, I sail into your harbor, and after I'm in your harbor, I pull the agape flag down, run up to Jolly Roger, and tell you I'm here to rape, pillage, and plunder. And that's what happens on television, it's in the church, it's all over in every part. Politics, medicine, law, schools, you name it, the, and the air off shift, the whole thing has piles of hidden agenda. What's one of the reasons why we trust nobody? That's why we've been working at this thing. Can I trust this thing? Can I trust God? One of the things about God, never does God deal with hidden agendas. All right, last, one, or last two, personal advantage. Everything has to have Bob Mumford at the center. I got to move in this thing such a way this comes out for me. I went hunting with a group of guys, and uh, the next morning we're going to go out in a, in a hunting situation where there were hunting stands, and, and I watched all the guys start to fight over who gets the best spot. And I thought, I don't believe this. I really don't believe this. Now, personal advantage, you will see this, smell this, you'll see this come out of yourself in so many ways. How many of you know what you feel when somebody cuts in the line? This is just think what you feel. You, 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 you're in the line, and, and you're in the chow line or gasoline line. Uh, and, and I remember during the gasoline crunch, a guy pulled in ahead of everyone else to get gasoline for his car. The guys jumped out, beat him to a pulp, literally beat him to a pulp, only to find out that his wife was in the back seat about to have a baby. He was trying to get some gas to get to the hospital, but he dared pull in line ahead of me. You hear what I'm saying? Last one, undisturbed. This is much, much more complicated than it looks. There are people whose whole life is designed to be undisturbed. Now think with me. One story. A priest and a Levite was going up to worship. And there's a guy on the side of the road all beat up. Now, everybody said they didn't care. Oh, they cared. They just couldn't bother. They just couldn't be what? They couldn't be disturbed. They walked past him, walked past him by virtue of the fact that they could not be disturbed. And there comes a Samaritan. The Samaritan says, hey, Matthew, what's wrong, man? He picks him up, puts him on the donkey, takes him to the hotel, and he says, listen, if there's any other bill, call me. I'll pay the bill. Now, Jesus is saying something very, very critical to us. Now, the whole thing of being undisturbed, uh, that, and this thing is a tremendous manifestation of eros, and I, I've got to get moving here, or we won't get where we want to go. Now, how many can see, how many could just see, right off the bat, all seven of these giants at the foot washing? Jesus brings the disciples in. They're all maneuvering for, for right? They're all maneuvering. Who's going to lead this thing? And, 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 and everybody need, knows, everybody knows the feet needs to be washed. And everybody's what? What are they doing? Looking good. And, and Jesus comes in, puts the towel on, kneels down, starts to wash their feet. And Peter almost come unglued. Because, and then he says to them, do you know what I'm doing to you? 
Duh. All right. <laughs> they don't know what he's doing to them. He said, but you'll know later. You call me Lord, and I'm your Lord. And now, listen, learning to serve in that manner, being able to give it. See, so all, I wish we could talk about, about the, the whole John 13 experience, but just, just read the scriptures and you'll see, you'll see these seven giants revealed among the disciples. You see them in the world. I, I, we could talk about a, a pile of these here, but, but all of these are the, the, the evidences that Eros is at the control, the very center of your life. All right, now let's go to our, our second section. How many can see, well, I, I keep wanting to come back here, how many can see looking good as an Eros payoff? Can you see that I would rather tell you a lie than what? Than look bad. In fact, that's the source of most lying is to, is to, um, to keep up. The dog ate my homework. You understand? The implications being, rather than saying I was too lazy to do the assignment... I, I know the dog ate my homework, all right? Now, if we, if we see this, if we see this, now what I want you to do on your notes is to draw a heart on your, um, on your little man. Will you do that now? Draw a heart on your little man. And, and we're going to take, take these seven things and we're going to apply them over here in such a way that we could begin to see a little more carefully how that these, these seven things are broken not by focusing on them. It's not by focusing on them. If I, if I centered on the thing that says, do you think I have a hidden agenda in this? What's happening now? I'm, I'm back in kind of an Eros prison and I think, oh, is this a real motive? Is this a godly motive? Is this not a godly motive? Is this soul or spirit? Man, I, I wind up on the funny farm, see? Because you can't, you just can't do that. What we've got to find out is how does this work? Now, remember the, the Matthew 15 passage, out of the heart, all right? Out of the heart. This stuff comes out of the heart. It's not something you can guard yourself against. You can only see it when it comes out. You understand? I, 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 my wife is here. Forgive this dumb illustration, but I, I just want you to hear something that broke something in me. And it's not, I hope it never gets healed. My dear wife, who is a, a soldier in God, and every night she gets me out a calcium pill before I go to bed, every night, very faithfully. She's busy. I go to the, to the counter, go to the, 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 the closet where there's calcium pill, get my own calcium pill out, take the calcium pill, put the lid in, go back, go to bed. She comes in in a few moments and says, where is my calcium pill? I wish the bed would have swallowed me up, you know. And I laid there, and she says, well, we have a little Eros here. Do we not have a little Eros here? And, and, and by God's grace, she put grace on it. But I saw how absolutely, what? You understand? In, it, the man who's teaching it, all the, and I see it manifest. I watch this stuff until, and it breaks me. Now, why do I need a daily cross? You understand? Why do I need a daily cross? Because as this stuff comes up, I said, Jesus, I am going to let feel good die. I am not living my life to feel good. So the only way that this, can, this power of this can be broken is by the cross. Now, we could talk about the cross. I'm going to talk about it in just a moment as we put the thing in focus right here. Now, quickly, listen to the words. I want, I want you on your notes where it says uh, eros and agape displacement. Will you write these words? The expulsive power of new affection. It is not by willpower that we deal with these. 
When I see this, when, when my wife confronted me with that, I stood there so, I mean, I lay there so stunned that after all these years, I couldn't think about the, the, the simple, unselfish way of giving her calcium pill out so that I could care for her in the way that she cared for me. Does that, does that make sense? And, and so it was a tremendously embarrassing thing. God used it, all right? Now watch. Here, here's where we're going. The, the, when Eros is at the center of my being, and it is spilling out of my heart. It's spilling out of my heart. I, 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 I speak of... Always it is something coming out of my person that is almost nauseous. And, and what's happening to me now, of course, is the more I get out and see and meet people who haven't had a, an Eros paradigm, um, an Eros agape paradigm shift, the more I recognize how per, per, persuade, pervasive this is in American society. When Eros is at the center of my being, agape is forced out to the periphery of my being. When agape, which is Christ, Christ is agape incarnate, Paul says, it is no longer I who live, but what? Christ lives in me. Well, now what I'm trying to show you, and this is we've got to understand, what I, you've got to hear is, this is not external. It's not something we are putting on. You understand? It's some kind of a change where out of my heart, agape is being manifested. Now, I said this to you a couple of days ago, or a couple of sessions ago. Look at Christ. Now, watch. He's hanging between heaven and earth. He is beaten into a bloody pulp. The Hebrew, the, the Spanish word is molido. It's, a, it's a, a word which says he looked like hamburger. And he's hanging there. And while he's hanging there, he is not a victim. He is not in self-pity. He is not in any kind of a... Only thing he is concerned about is agape is flowing out of his person. And he says, Father, Father, forgive those two men that nailed me to the tree. Father, forgive them. Now, watch. What, what out of the heart? This is not something he can put on because he learned it in the Sunday school class. It's something that is manifesting out of the deep of his person. He is able to say out of his heart, hanging there in the crisis, he says, Father, forgive them. Then he says, uh, Mary, his mother, and to John, and he, and he starts sorting out his, 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 his family situations while he is in the midst of the most un, uh, 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 indescribable kind of agony. Agape is flowing out of his person. I said, Lord, I don't even know if I can play in this league. I'm not sure. I don't know what you got to do to me, Master, but you got to do something. Now, here's what I'm trying to show you, very simply. As we commit our love to God, this thing, a new center of my person, it's not an experience, it's a journey. Remember that? It's something that gently but gently, God is putting something out of my heart. I am finding a compassion that is moving out of my person. Now watch. This person has security. Let me put it up here now. This person has, this person has security, identity, and belonging in God. All right? So as he finds himself loved of the Father, as he finds himself loved of the Father, and, 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 and God's agape is coming out of him, how many of you can see he's secure enough to let these things die? I don't need to look good. You understand? I am not living to feel good. I really know enough of, of the security of God to let my life be disturbed. 
could you could you help me get my car out of the ditch? Remember the old stretch we go. Could I? Could you help? Certainly, I'll be right there. Because what's happening is agape. Agape doesn't understand being disturbed. Agape is something that is eager to move and minister and give because it's an expression of God reaching through this person to a hurting world. Now, what I'm saying simply is this. Security, identity, belonging means that in this place, I really can have um, the courage to let these things die and I, I can serve and obey and respond to Christ, respond to human need, hurting people. But it's not something I'm putting on. It's something that's coming out of the deep of my soul. It's a heart expression. It's coming out of a new center. It is no longer I, but Christ who lives in me. Now, that is such normal Christian life that, that, that we're, we're appealing to God to give us that kind of a center. Heavenly Father, I pray. I pray for those who are watching this by tape. I know it's inadequately spelled out, Master, but I pray that you would take the inadequacies and the weaknesses and bear witness to those whose heart wants to find a new center in their being. For Jesus' sake, amen. You know, I've always gone around with the, uh, the feel good, look good, uh, be right, you know, that's, that's just the way the street attitude is. And uh, I'm actually learning through Christ to, uh, and, and just to, to be happy with who I am, you know, without, without having to try to look good. Being in control, being looking good, trying to look good, trying to have all the things, it don't work. Can your life account for anything good after you've messed it up? Join us in our last session. See you then.